all right folks uh just quickly just some information as well we're going to move on to new wider world we're going to read through a couple of pages a bit of highlighting a few notes to be added okay and after that we're just going to look i sent you on sunday in the forecast sheet okay migration push and pull factors very simple little sheet just to give you some extra information um that we can add to our notes about that if you if you can print out that sheet great if you can't we'll add it to our notes so first things first a new outer world page 22. okay so uh on page 22 of new outer world okay just gonna go through some stuff in green again so migration is the overall now what we'll do maybe next lesson or at the end of this topic i'll try and make some type of flow diagram i was going to do it today but we won't have covered all the all the vocabulary okay so uh migration is the movement and in human terms usually means a change sorry it's a movement and in human terms usually means a change of home or location okay so migration is the movement of people usually okay obviously we say animals and stuff migrate as well when they move around but if we're looking solely at just people today that's what migration is it's the movement of people and a change of home okay it can be temporary seasonal you can even have daily movements all right as well as permanent changes both between countries and within a country now this that's important okay so you can move between countries or you can move somewhere else within your own country so for example if you relocated to grand bahama you that would still be migration but you haven't left your country okay so sometimes that's called national or internal migration we'll get to that uh, in another lesson okay uh, permanent international migration so there's that word international is the movement of people between countries okay we know immigrants and immigrants right the migration balance is the difference between the numbers of immigrants and immigrants so a net migration loss lose okay countries with a net migration loss lose more people through emigration than they gain by immigration so whilst a lot of similar words there all it means is a country will have people leaving immigrants and people coming in immigrants each year if you have more people leaving than coming in that means you'll have a migration loss and your population will go down okay shocking enough the opposite and net migration gain receive more people through immigration than they lose through emigration so again if your country has more people moving in there each year than leaving then your population will go up all right so that's all that is there there's a lot of vocab in here but it's it's fairly straightforward so when you're reading that be careful all right you need to know about this migration balance you can have a loss or a gain and you need to be aware that migration can happen within a country as well as between countries all right uh, on to page 23 okay so on page 23 it goes through uh, the different types of migrants then okay again a migrant is just somebody who moves either emigrates or immigrates Immi uh, immigrant okay so the main the big one is refugees so again the first bit's important just well, i know we've already written down a definition for refugees but we haven't included a lot of the causes so refugees are people who have been forced to leave their home country okay they've been forced out against their choice for fear of persecution for reasons of race religion politics uh, civil war or due to disaster okay so any of those things can create refugees and then they'll try and move to the next country they move to other countries hoping to find help and asylum and refuge and safety and a new life. Down here then, however, they live in extreme poverty. So when most of the time when they get to these new countries, they have to wait for the country to make a decision about whether or not to grant them a place to live and work. So whilst they're there, they live in extreme poverty, lacking adequate food, shelter, clothing, education and medical care. Okay, they have no citizenship, few rights virtually no prospects and are unlikely to return to their homeland so at the moment there's huge amounts of refugees around the world okay and um, the most obvious one is because of uh, the wars in the middle east like in syria a lot of syrians have moved up to places like turkey and so on but they are not allowed to just come in straight away and work okay the, the government and the people in turkey need to try and decide uh, what to do with them so whilst they're in that kind of decision-making process that refugees are quite often just left in these what they're called refugee camps 
and it's not very pleasant. Okay. Asylum seekers we've already done. Illegal immigrants we've done. I just want to highlight they're likely to have re to rely on local people to find them food and shelter and work, which leaves them vulnerable to exploitation. So because the illegals, they're not l legally allowed to live and work in a place, but if they get in there, they need to rely on local people to try and you know get them a job where they can just get paid in cash and maybe somewhere to stay and stuff. Usually not very good quality, but what you have to remember is in this case the people are leaving a terrible situation behind so even some little flat with a basic job is probably better than what they had before okay economic migrants we haven't touched on and uh, i'm one of these all right so these are people who made a conscious choice to leave their home country knowing they can return there if they wish without problems so i could fly to ireland tomorrow if i if i re well if there was planes flying but you know what i mean so i can always go home uh, this movement, which they take voluntary, is usually to find a better job and so on. Now, again, I just moved for a change of lifestyle and climate. Uh, on to page 24. Okay, so on page 24, okay, we got migration into the UK. So, again, we know this book is geared towards uh, the UK. So, we're just going to, this just goes through a couple of different things and it starts to touch on. Um, of what we look at in our next lesson the impacts of migration which are very very they're always in the news okay it's a very current affairs and it's it's a very interesting topic migration what to do about it because movement is so easy now okay you can move to countries so easily it's it's becoming a very hot topic so the uk in particular has experienced waves of immigrants okay giving it uh, giving it a society that has always been one of mixed races and cultures. Now that sounds great, and at times it is. It's a wonderful thing, but it's also led to huge problems. Okay, you only even have to think about America as well. Uh, just for example, the Irish have settled in Britain for several centuries, so we've been going over there for years for jobs. Okay, then when Europe was created, okay, migrants were both during and after the Second World War. Okay. At the beginning, the level of immigrants was small enough to be easily assimilated into the existing population. Now, this word assimilated, I should have given you a definition for that. Assimilated is when people, when you adjust to somebody's culture, okay? So, you accept their foods and their laws and, you know, um, you follow their government and stuff like that. You may even learn the language and, and things like that, okay? So, you, you, what happens is immigrants should really, once they move to a place, go right. I'm in this new country, this is their way of doing things, I'll assimilate into that, I'll, I'll adjust myself um, to meet that. Now this is a big, big issue nowadays because a lot of people say immigrants don't do enough to assimilate and they destroy the, the host country. Um, however, the immediate, after the post-war and since, a much larger influx, many of whom are different, have different colours of skin, have moved into the UK. It is this biological difference rather than social issues that has led to racial tensions in part of the UK. So migration can definitely start to cause racial issues, okay, and tensions and social problems um, in countries. Right? And again, we're starting to see that really, really uh, become a focus in modern day America and the UK. Okay, just gonna jump down to the bottom of page 24, all right. Uh, there's also this uneven concentration of ethnic groups. Okay, ethnic ethnicity is your background and colour or race. Okay, so immigrants avoided areas that had high unemployment, so they moved straight into the cities where there were better job opportunities. So what actually happened is, you you have a lot of people moving into countries like the UK and the USA, all right, but then you get this unrepresentative uh, concentrations of of immigrants in cities because that's where they all want to move to to get the best jobs they can. So it's in cities where you tend to have the most diverse populations and most and this is also where people then start to feel overwhelmed by by the mass Im immigration all right and in the next video we're going to go on to page 26